going on everyone this is shamar here super excited to bring you coverage of the kingslayer tournament at gen con for a game of thrones the card game 2.0 uh this was a finals that was hosted by the white book podcast um for those who don't know ffg scheduled this event to be swiss and then a cut to top 16 with prize support for the top 16 there was no actual official play down so the guys from white book uh found a whole bunch of or created a whole bunch of uh custom content to give away and have their own play down to the final so this is the coverage of that we have alex versus salim two players out of quebec so it was an all canadian final alex is playing greyjoy night's watch and salim is playing greyjoy targaryen um these two i guess houses were put together based on the kingslayer rules which was you had to put two complete houses together um and then a minimum of 10 neutrals so that's why you're going to see lots of lo uh, loyal and non-loyals being played together which uh by the regular structured rules would not be able to happen but because of this tournament that's why so we have a uh, four card flop on both sides of the table um for those who don't know the cards, I have the cards, card images up for you, so you can just pause it and look at what they both have. But uh, on Salim's side, he has Alanis Greyjoy, uh, I believe a King's Road, Drogon, and I can't remember the name of that last card. And then on Alex's side, uh, he's got what looks to be the Drowned Men, Sam Tarly, uh, the Rose Road, and the same guy that I can't remember his name. So we're in the plot phase now. Uh, both guys are just deciding what plot they want to play. Again, these are two players from Quebec. Um, both played 1.0, so they know what they're doing. So we've got a Feast for Crows and Naval Superiority. Naval Superiority uh, is meant to block the gold or the income on your opponent's plot card if they're playing an Edict or a Kingdom. And so there you can see some of the prize support that was created by the white book as Alex plays a meager contribution to steal one gold from Salim immediately. Um, those tokens right there are gold tokens that were provided by Will Lentz out of the white book. So we have here another uh, King's Road into play, which Salim uses right away to reduce the cost of his next character by three, pays one, and let's see who he puts out here for four and he drops an unsullied for four while unsullied is attacking um participating characters on the other side that are defending at minus one strength so he's done his marshalling he's gonna pass it over to alex alex does have a king's road here to use as well to reduce the cost of a character that he plays by three we'll see if he decides to pop that off He almost did, hesitates, and pays one for the steward at the wall. Which is not a bad card. I mean, he's got two intrigue icons out and an Atlantis Greyjoy. So three intrigues out on Alex's side of the board. You know he's going to win some intrigue here. So challenges phase, uh, Sleem's first player, so he's going to get to decide which challenges he wants to make and this is looking like a military challenge of four here with Drogon I'm going to assume that Alex is just going to uh, block it so that it's not unopposed and claim one of his little weenie characters on the board here and there it is he blocks and kills the guy whose name I can't remember. It's funny, I have a good memory for most of the cards already. And that one card I just can't for the life of me remember. So this looks like an entry challenge here with Atlantis Greyjoy. Uh, her ability isn't one that pops off in challenges. It just reduces the reserve value by one on each player's plot card. So we got the Kraken's Grasp to reduce uh, the strength of a character with five or less strength to zero. So that challenge is going to go through 
and we saw that uh, it was a claim of one there. So Selene gets one card out of Alex's hand. <clears throat> Intrigue of one on Alex's side it goes unopposed. Mix up here with what card? Oh, Asher Greyjoy. Very nice. And because it's Kingslayer, there's only one copy of each of these huge, uh, the big players. So Asher Greyjoy, that's the only Asher Greyjoy in Salim's deck. And it looks like Alex forgot to take his unopposed power as he runs a power challenge that gets blocked. Or sorry, military challenge that was blocked. So dominance was a tie, and we move into the second round of plots here. Both guys moving at lightning pace. So Alex knows already what he wants to play, which is interesting. Very nice. We've got heads on spikes and filthy accusations. So Alex is going to get the, to uh, pull one card from Salim's hand. If it's a character, he gains two power. If not, it just gets to discarded. They both get discarded either way and gets his reducer. And Salim gets to kneel a character of his choice. And he kneels uh, Alex's one military icon on the board. Very smart play. And for those who don't know, the Heads on Spikes, um, that is Nate French on the card art there, on the first spike. So a lot of people had him signing their card that, at Gen Con. As we see Aaron Dampere coming to play. Aaron Dampere is a fantastic card. Uh, lets you bring Ironborn characters back from the dead into play. Ooh, the Long Claw on Sam. <laughs> You wouldn't see that too often. I don't know if George R. R. Martin would uh, ever allow that to take place. So C Tower comes into play for, for Salim. Neil to reduce the cost of the next um, Greyjoy character you play in Marshalling by one. And another dragon, Viserion. Each Stormborn character gains stealth, I believe. And Drogon is each Stormborn character um, gains renown if I'm not mistaken. So we, we're looking for a Danny pretty soon here. Salim tries to put a throwing axe on Alanis, but she's not Ironborn, so that's not going to work. Um, throwing axe is attached to an Ironborn character, uh, and you can sacrifice Iron Axe to kill a character that participated on the defending side in a challenge. So it gets you a lot of unopposed. And of course, Alex, playing Greyjoy as well, picked up on that. So we've got an Intrigue Challenge with uh, Sam. Which is going to go through unopposed. So Sam now has Renown, by the way, because of Longclaw. So that's one power for unopposed, and one power should go to Sam for Renown. And I remember this discussion here. They were just trying to figure out when keywords... Um, or where keywords fall in the framework of the game. And if I'm not mistaken, keywords are now the very last thing after claim. So it'll be Intrigue Challenge, it's unopposed. Um, Alex is gonna claim a card from Salim's hand, and then he's gonna draw a card for Insight because Sam also has Insight. So Sam has Insight and he has Renown on him. As Alex pulls that throwing ax that uh, Salim was unable to play. Or decided not to play because he does have an Ironborn character out, um, but he does want to waste it on a uh, one military icon, two strength Ironborn. So we've got Samuel Tarly putting in work here early. Sam Slayer. So it's a military challenge. It's going to go through unopposed here. What is that guy's name? Is he the Salty Navigator? I feel like that's his name or something like that. I feel like that's his name. Or maybe that's from 1.0. I don't know. Something to do with being salty. <laughs> so 
So the score is Alex with two power to Salim's one, but it is still Salim's uh, challenges phase. So it's entry challenge, I was blocked. And this is a power challenge here, which Salim wins quite easily because Aaron Danvers doesn't have too much in the way of strength. Uh, so that is now three, two, one for Salim. As we move into the third plot. And for new players, Game of Thrones has uh, seven card plot decks. So we've got summons and a noble cause played. Summons is great for this, was great for a tournament like this, to search the top 10 cards of your deck for a character. Helps you see what you what you want to see and has a pretty high um, income on it so that you can get that character out immediately. <laughs> Sleep struggling to count the 10 cards here, just making sure. And then on Alex's side, um, a noble cause lets him reduce the cost of a lord or lady character by two. Which is another fantastic card because the majority of the heavy hitter cards in each faction are either a lord or a lady. So you know that he might have a heavy, heavy hitter in his deck or he's just hoping to draw into one so that he can play it um, after the draw phase. And I just missed who Salim took. I think it was uh, Balin. Or I could have just made that up. Just kidding, it was Balin. <laughs> so Balin Greyjoy, um, he has Renown, and he has the 1.0 version of Intimidate, but this is a text version. So any character with Strength lower than his does not contribute to the challenge. So he gets a lot of unopposed as well. Which is fantastic because he has that Renown on him. So we move over to Alex's marshalling phase. He has, I believe, six gold and reduces by two on a lord or lady. But first plays the Iron Islands Fishmonger and then drops Asha into play. So stealth and after you win an unopposed challenge, Asha Greyjoy, that she Asha participates in, she gets to stand. But it looks like Alex spent all of his money here. He didn't actually use the uh, noble cause to reduce by two. He should have two gold left over as he stuffs that challenge um entry challenge he stuffed an entry challenge so he's going to draw for insight and he's going to get that renown on sam who is still putting in work so uncharacteristic of sam what is this uh, unless it's battle of the books maybe that's what it is this intrigue challenge is just battle of the books so we've got balin you know that's going to go through unopposed. Uh, no one has higher strength than he does on Alex's side of the board. So one for renown, one for unopposed. Oh, sorry, that was a power challenge for, for Balin. And then a military challenge here for Drogon. <clears throat> which kills the Iron Island Fishmonger. But you know that she was just played as fodder. So Alex isn't too worried about that. It would be nice if she could survive till the next round so that he can finally make that buck back because you know that he played uh, the Fishmonger for one and then used it to reduce by one. So there was no net gain there. So that's a card that you want to uh, get in setup or try to try to have her on the board for one extra turn so you can actually get a, a benefit from her. Although using her as military claim is a benefit as well because you don't have to kill one of your more important characters. I'm just still so baffled that Sam has renown and is putting in work by himself right now. So we've got Asha Greyjoy who stealths um, the Unsullied with the military challenge. Still gonna win. Claims the salty guy. I'm just calling him the salty navigator. Hopefully someone can tell me in the comments what the hell that name is. I'm gonna check it after this anyway. I should know I'm a Greyjoy player. Aaron Damfair with the power challenge of three, and it gets stuffed by Viserion and Unsullied. So it is 6-3, but it should be 6-4, because Alex would have had two gold left over 
uh, which would have helped him in dominance. And I think he just he just realized that as well, as he says it's too late. Well, that's okay. These guys are good friends, so. <laughs> the double wildfire play. Double wildfire. So each of them have to kill um, all characters on the board. Or choose three characters and kill all the other ones on their side of the board. So by the end of this, they'll both have three on their side. So Viserion and Alana's Greyjoy are now gone for Selim. And things are starting to look a little bit better for Alex here. Because of that Asher Greyjoy um, stealth, he can get some challenges through if he's able to put down another military icon. If you can get a Theon out, that would be the best. As he throws down the Greyjoy Reducer Sea Tower as his limited card for this round. And a Milk of the Poppy. Any 1.0 player knows what that does. Just blanks that Bale and Greyjoy card, so now Bale and Greyjoy won't be able to get any unopposed for characters on the other side participating with less strength than he has. And he also loses his renown, which is very, very big. But Salim is a Targ player, and we know that uh, if Viserys Targaryen comes out, he is able to remove attachments when he leaves play. And we've got a Messenger Raven. Which you can return to your hand during dominance to draw a card. A little card draw engine there for one buck. Not too shabby. Iron Fleet Scout. Kneel it to increase the strength of a Greyjoy character by one or by two if you're the first player. But Salim is second player so there won't be any two, two bounces. And the Braided Warrior. No attachments except weapon. <clears throat> and the only weapon that they can really wear right now is... Um, is Drogo's Arak, <laughs> which comes out right now. Attached character gets plus two strength. If it's Cal Drogo, um, he stands during the first military challenge that he participates in. Which, as we know, Drogo, his ability is that he can uh, initiate two military challenges. So that's why you can have him stand in both. So, Intrigue Challenge, won by Alex. Plays the Kraken's Grasp. Which gets blocked by the Hand's Judgment. He was trying to um, get rid of the attachment, the Drogo's Iraq. So after you win an unopposed challenge, you can remove a location or attachment. So he doesn't like that plus two over there. That and in 2.0, if Drogo, if uh, the Braided Warriors dies, because Drogo's Iraq doesn't have the keyword terminal, it doesn't go to the discard pile. It goes back to Salim's hand. So you do want to deal with that as soon as possible so that when Drogo comes out, it's not available. So 5-4 as we go into Salim's challenges now. So it's a military challenge of three. Sorry, five because of Drogo's Iraq. And it's going to go unopposed, but he's going to save Asha Greyjoy instead of claiming her for military. So now she's going to have plus one strength. Because of Risen from the Sea... And Salim goes out 8-3 after that power challenge. Now we've got March of the Wall and Confiscation. I love the card March of the Wall. In this case here, this is a very smart play by Salim. Um, because Confiscation allows Alex to remove an attachment, Salim is going to 
uh, claim, I believe, yeah, he claims a braided warrior for March of the Wall, so he discards that from play be so that he can get the Iraq back to his hand. And then now that forces Alex to remove an attachment. The only attachment that Alex can remove at this point is um, the Risen from the Sea that was played on Asher Greyjoy and gave her plus one because he doesn't want to remove, obviously, the Milk of the Poppy that he played on Bailing Greyjoy. So that was a very smart play from Salim. Forces Alex to get rid of one of his own beneficial attachments by choosing for his plot to fire first. So Salim had more uh, initiative, choose his plot to fire first, and then Alex to go second. And just banks all of his gold here, doesn't marshal anything. Got a drown man. Very expensive, but a very good card. And plays the Messenger Raven again. So like I said, very cheap draw engine. If you have that gold left over, or a gold left over, it's better off just to play it and get it out on the table. At the worst, it'll be... Um, Something that you can use for a military claim. As we have a military challenge initiated by Salim using the Unsullied. So minus one to whichever characters decide to try to oppose this. Goes unopposed and claims the Raven. As I said, very nice for a military claim. Especially when your characters are running low as uh, Alex's are due to that wildfire assault. Power challenge of five with Balin. Opposed by the drowned men, but uh, Salim still goes up 10-2 as he steals that one power. <laughs> Sam again with the unopposed entry challenge. Gets Drogo's a rock. He's gonna get one power for unopposed and one power for renown. I, oh my gosh! Every time that I see Sam claim power, I'm just, <laughs> it's just funny to me. And then Asha Greyjoy. Uh, power challenge, which is again unopposed. She stands. Fire and Blood here to bring Viserion back out into play from the Dead Pile. Another great card. Especially if you have Hatchlings in your discard or Dead Pile. But Asher Greyjoy with the military challenge, stealthing uh, Viserion, or uh, Drogon, sorry. It's going to be opposed by Viserion and the Unsullied dies. That was a very nice play by, by Selim, setting up a potential Danny play coming up here next turn having two dragons out Danny's gonna be given renown and stealth gotta assume that's what he's doing and also so that he wouldn't have to uh, take an unopposed military challenge but either way yep so sneak attack and marching orders so that's gonna give Salim nine gold to spend here you gotta think or just assume that he has Danny in his hand and the sneak attack is five gold, 11 ish initiative. You may initiate only one challenge, but that challenge has a claim of two on Alex's side. So you know he's gonna try to pop off with the military here. But interested to see what Slim didn't spend that nine gold on. My assumption is he has Danny in his hand and he's just gonna pay seven straight up, get Danny out on the board and start to try to put in some work with her and stuff Sam. <laughs> Sam Slayer. So reduce by one and pay three 
for Theon Greyjoy. After you win an unopposed challenge in which Theon participated, claim one power. And an Iron Throne contributes, is it 8 strength or 10 strength to dominance? I always forget. And there's the Danny. Yep. You gotta assume that's that's why he played such a high gold plot. Danny comes out, he banks two. And now things get stick get scary. While she's standing, every character on Alex's side has minus one strength, which sets them up for a Dracarys um, burn. So we've got Theon and Asha, the siblings, with a military challenge and a double stealth. So the only person that can oppose this, oppose this is Balin. But I don't think that's what Alex is worried about. He doesn't care about the unopposed here. There's four characters on Salim's side of the board. If you get rid of two of them, you're in pretty good shape. So Salim's thinking here what's he, what he's going to do. And sorry, my apologies. It was Balin and Viserion. Or Balin and Drogon that got uh, stealthed, I think. Because they have the highest strength. So I would assume it was them too. But at five and four. Yeah. So he's going to oppose it here with Viserion. The only character that he can oppose it with. Because the other two are stealthed. And for claim, he's going to take Viserion. And does he take Balin? To keep getting that effect for Danny off of Drogon? No, claims both dragons. Dang, what a turn of events. So that's Alex's only challenge because of his plot. As Selim figures out what he's going to do here. We've got a military challenge with Balin Greyjoy at 5. Remember his card is blanked, so... We have a defend and claim of 1. That just happened simultaneously. And... A, is that an intrigue or a power? I believe that's a power challenge. Yeah, because Sam would have been able to defend. So that's a power challenge uh, with Danny to put Salim up 12-5. <laughs> he was counting his money to win dominance, but the Iron Throne is out. Can't get any better than that. Uh, that puts Alex up to 6 as they play their final plots here. 7th. 2 that we've seen, a noble cause for Salim and summons for Alex. don't know if the summons I feel like the summons a little too late for Alex here um, and Slim's gonna be able to get a, a nice card here because of that reduction of two but it's looking like he's just gonna save his monies yep just saves his gold so we got some nasty play coming up here some sort of event so Alex finds his Balin which he has uh, more than enough money to play with his he gets four from the plot uh, one from maybe he doesn't have enough oh yeah he does he has four from the plot one from his uh, Rose Road and then can reduce by one with the sea tower so that's six exactly Might even draw into a King's Road. Who knows? Oh, so there's the second Sea Tower. Perfect. So two Sea Towers to reduce by two. And spends four. And you got to assume that's Balon coming out. Boom. Palin Greyjoy. And we know what he does. Although Sleem's got stuffed by that milk of poppy very early. So Sleem spends four for a drowned man. Oh, reduces by one. So we get a gold back. 
I forgot that uh, Alex was going was first player, so Salim wasn't banking that six gold. He was just waiting for his turn to marshal. So here we go. Military challenge, stealthing, drowned men, and Balin. So this is going to go unopposed. Claim of one. And it's going to be the drowned men that gets claimed. Poor guys. They get drowned, come back to life, only to die again moments after being played. And the Drakaris is out. So Drakaris on Asha. Asha only has four strength. So uh, minus four strength to a character. If that character strength hits zero, as a result, they die. So she is dead. Although the challenge does still go through unopposed. Salim saves with a Risen from the Sea. Gotta love the Drowned Men. Sea saves. So Theon claims one for his ability. But his sister was burned in the fray. Oh, sorry. No attachments on the Drowned Men. So it had to go on Bail and Greyjoy. The save, anyway. So Balin was saved, not the Drowned Men. He lives to fight another day. It was very close here for Alex. He he looked like he had a shot at coming back. Um, but the the play that brought Viserion back into play was huge, as well as the Dracarys. As he now plays Waking the Dragon to restand Danny. However, if she doesn't make it through this round, she has to go back to, or if Slim doesn't win this round, she would have to go back to his hand because of that card. So he's going for it all here. So he's making some final calculations. You don't want Danny to go back to your hand. She costs too much to have to play her twice. So you can't mess this one up. Ooh. Six strength because he was the one that was saved. So he gets a plus one. So that means that he can't drop to the to zero. Dang. Risen from the sea comes in handy. So Danny with the power challenge, 14. And finishes with an unopposed by the Drowned Men for 15 power. And taking the championship. So Salim is the 2015 and probably the Kingslayer forevermore. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you have a chance, get over to the White Book Podcast to learn some more about Game of Thrones 2.0. These guys are fantastic. Their podcasts are insightful and funny, and I'm sure you'll enjoy that. So again, that's White Book. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, like their page on Facebook as well. This has been Shamar for Throne Runner. Have a great day.